cartoons and cinema. If you grew up in the 40s or 50s, perhaps it was Mickey Mouse that always brought a smile to your face. If you grew up in the 70s or 80s, maybe it was the Smurfs or the Super Friends. For me, though, it was all of the above. One cast of wacky characters, or should I say, Looney Tunes, have been around since I was knee-high to a grasshopper and just recently celebrated their 80th anniversary. Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, Porky Pig, Elmer Fudd, I say, I say, I say, Foghorn Leghorn, and my personal favorite, The Roadrunner and Wiley Coyote. Today, we are taking a look at the classic 1985 Atari arcade hit, Roadrunner. What is the backstory on this game and why does it involve laser disc technology? So run as fast as you can and don't worry about Wiley because he couldn't catch a cold. This is the history of Roadrunner the arcade game. The year is 1984 and Atari games designer Ed Logg is starting to work on his next arcade project. Atari was owned by Warner Brothers, so people in the arcade division were encouraged to look into Warner's properties for ideas. Mr. Log had already worked on a few successful Atari arcade games, including Asteroids and Centipede. So when the opportunity arose, he took it. He grew up as a fan of the Road Runner cartoons and thought this would be perfect for a game, especially with the chase and evade theme. The Road Runner and Wily Coyote, or simply known as the Coyote, debuted in 1949 in the cartoon short Fast and Furious, and it involves a famished coyote who attempts to capture and eat the blue-haired hyperactive Road Runner. In a typical episode, the Coyote does this by enlisting the help of the Acme Mail Order Company, which usually blows up in his face in pure slapstick style. Atari had become heavily invested in Laserdisc games, so they insisted that Mr. Log use this technology to design his game around. Laserdisc games rose to prominence with a groundbreaking Dragon's Lair in 1983, and many thought this was the future of gaming. He envisioned a side-scroller with the player assuming the role of the Roadrunner as they tried to avoid various traps of the Coyote. The character sprites would be computer-generated and overlaid with animated backgrounds streaming from the laser disc. Whenever one of the Coyote's gadgets would blow up in his face, the game would cut to an actual cartoon showing the results. It was around this time that Atari realized that the future of gaming was not in this technology. There were seek time issues which resulted in a black screen for 4-5 to five seconds which actually broke up the flow of the gameplay. Also, the Laserdisc players kept breaking down, especially in the Firefox arcade game. Roadrunner was put out into a test market, but again, due to the failure of the Laserdisc player, it did not rate highly among arcade goers. The video footage kept having sync issues with the character sprites which did not make for a very enjoyable experience. Atari canceled all Laserdisc games and wanted Mr. Log to redesign the game for their System 1 hardware, but he refused and left the project. At this point, designer Mike Halley was brought on board to convert the game over to the System 1 hardware. The cartoon segments from the Laserdisc had to go, but everything else was there and then some. The game did not use a standard 8-way joystick for the controls. Instead, it used a controller with a pentiometer built in allowing for variable speeds and precision movements. Roadrunner was released in 1985 by Atari. You take on the role of the Roadrunner as he makes his way from right to left, collecting all the birdseed you can while avoiding all of the Coyote's gadgets. Most of the game design from the original Laserdisc transferred over with only one major change. The initial concept of the birdseed in the prototype was just a point bonus. But for the actual released arcade version, if you miss five of the bird seeds, your character will faint and be captured by the coyote. The controls are fairly straightforward with only one button which is used for jumping. Even as a youngster, when I first played this game back in 1985, it always seemed to me as if the Roadrunner was hopped up on goofballs or some other narcotic because he was always hyper to the max. 
If you end up missing all of your supply, you end up having major withdrawal symptoms. Anyway, the game is spread across 16 stages with the levels progressively getting harder and harder. The Coyote has a variety of gadgets to take you down such as rocket powered roller skates, a pogo stick, a backpack helicopter, a rocket in which he rides, land mines. Not only do you have to contend with the crazy antics of the dastardly Coyote, you also have to be on the lookout for various cars who have no problem hitting you. On the plus side, if you time it just right, you can lure the Coyote in front of the car and he will get hit instead. Although you technically lose a life in the arcade game, neither of the characters actually die similar to the cartoon. When the Coyote does catch the Roadrunner, he carries him off screen for his special feast. When you are hit by a car, the car carries you off screen. The graphics and animation, although a bit on the small side, are fantastic and is very reminiscent of the source material. The Roadrunner has his meep meep and tongue sound effects taken straight from the cartoon. The music is great as well with various classical tunes such as the William Tell Overture, Saber Dance, Flight of the Bumblebee, and the Nutcracker Russian Dance. There is also an excellent rendition of the Looney Tunes theme that plays when the game is over. Canvas Software were put in charge of the home computer versions and some of them turned out pretty good. The first one we are looking at is the good old Commodore 64 and it is an excellent port. The graphics are nice with fairly detailed sprites but the animation itself is nice and smooth. The scrolling is also smooth like butter and the speed of the game is very close to the arcade original. Sound effects and music are pretty good, but the playability does have its issues. Sometimes you can get stuck in the scenery which leaves you wide open for a wily attack. Overall though, this is a really good conversion. Let's take a look at the Amstrad version and looking at still shots of the game it looks pretty good. The sprites are detailed with lots of color but the problem comes with the speed. They should probably have changed the name to Road Walker because it's no faster than my 92 year old grandma who uses her walker to get around. The game runs at probably 30% of the arcade speed even with the border around the screen. The same problems that plagued the Commodore 64 version also rears its ugly head but only more so. The game controls okay as long as you don't get stuck in the scenery. The only sound effects you get are when you collect the bird seeds and also the noise from the vehicles. The farts and queefs of early MS-DOS games never sounded so good. The Atari 2600 version is up next and for the system it's not a bad conversion. While the sprites are only single color they are animated nicely and sort of resemble the arcade game. This is not a straight up conversion of the original as the level layouts are completely different. You also don't have to collect the bird seed which makes the game a whole lot easier. Smooth parallax scrolling is what's for dinner and it's always nice to see especially on the 2600. A nice intro tune plays when the game first starts up. The gameplay is silky smooth and the controls are nice and tight. This feels like the arcade game although a bit stripped down. Let's switch back over to the PC side and take a look at the Spectrum version. 
The very first thing that caught my eye was a giant colorful border around the play area, which was even bigger than the one found in the Amstrad version. The graphics are nice and detailed with large sprites, but to be honest, for the size of the play field, they are a bit too big. That's what she said. That's my joke, damn it, Dwight. If the sprites remain towards the middle or lower part of the screen, they are in a nice shade of black and white. If they drift towards the top of the play area, I've got one thing to say. Color Clash Amundo. It's a little hard on the eyes and also a little bit jarring if you're not expecting it. There is a somewhat decent rendition of the Looney Tunes theme on the title screen, and the one lone sound effect you get is a single meep when you collect birdseed. Apparently, it would have taken up too much processing power to get the standard Roadrunner meep meep. Control-wise, it's not too bad, with fairly smooth scrolling and the speed is pretty close to the arcade original. The MS-DOS version is up next, and for the time, it wasn't too bad. Graphics-wise, it looks very similar to the arcade game, but with one major downfall. The scrolling is way too jittery. The sprites and animation look really good, and there is even parallax scrolling to boot. The first thing you notice upon booting up the game is a large and in-charge PC speaker headache-inducing music. There are no farts and queefs here, my friends. It's pure music non-stop, and it takes about 2.8 seconds before it gets on your nerves. You always have the option to play with the sound off, and that's what I would recommend. A very cool feature is the ability to use the mouse, and I was shocked at how good it worked. If you can get past the stuttering scrolling, then you might want to check it out. Just make sure you have your earplugs in. And rounding out the home computer conversions is the Atari ST. Graphically, this is very close to the arcade game with colorful, well-animated sprites and smooth parallax scrolling backgrounds. The music is done fairly well, although I kept waiting for a digitized meep meep. Although unfortunately, it just didn't happen. Everything from the arcade game has been included and the gameplay feels like the arcade original. The last conversion we are looking at is the Nintendo version from Tengen Software. This is a very close representation of the arcade game with detailed sprites, but there is a slight loss of color. The music is very good with all of the tunes from the arcade game included. The gameplay feels good, although the speed seems a bit on the fast side when compared to the arcade game. Roadrunner was a fun little game when it came out in 1985. I can still recall playing it for the first time at my local bowling alley and was blown away by the digitized sounds and spectacular graphics. Because the Coyote had such a wide variety of gadgets, I kept wanting to get further and further into the game to see what else he could pull out of his acting bag of tricks. Due to licensing issues, the game has never been released on any compilation, so using the MAME emulator is your only option if you want to play it. If you are a fan of the Looney Tunes and have never had a chance to try this game out, give it a shot. You'll be glad you did. Be sure to leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe if you like this video. Also, if you would like to support me on Patreon, please click the link below.